Good morning, everybody. It's nine o'clock. Nine o'clock is with Father Warner. Today we are in the Friday of the twelfth week in ordinary time. Our text is taken from Matthew chapter eight, verses one to four, and I've entitled today's teaching "Face to Faith." Face to Faith. I'm going to read that text for you. Please open your Bibles, and I do hope you have a Bible. Uh, with you. I hope you scribble in it. I hope you make your notes in it. I hope you highlight it and I hope your Bible is coming apart because that's a very good indicator. I always believe this, that Bibles are poorly bound because most printers know that we don't use it. Yeah, but when you start using a, a Bible, you'll realize yourself it just comes apart. So a good test of a Bible being used is not that it is in mint condition, but it is uh, really coming apart. But in any case, let's read our text. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hands and touched him, saying, I do choose. Be made clean. Immediately the leprosy was cleansed. Then Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the leper knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean or you can make me well, as some texts have it. The Sermon on the Mount has ended. Remember, 5, 6 and 7 is the Sermon on the Mount. And the Gospel writer, St. Matthew, having shown Jesus as the Messiah of the Word, remember, the Messiah of the Word, because he's teaching in 5, 6 and 7, now presents Jesus as the Messiah of the deed. Jesus is not only speaking, he is also doing. So in this sec section, spanning chapters 8 verses from 8 chapter 1, verse 1, all the way down to chapter 9, verse 38, we will read nine miracle pericopes uh, that encompass ten individual miracles. So there are, uh, one of the miracles is rolled into each other. Okay, So there are totally ten miracles, but uh, Two of them are rolled. Now, somebody asked me the other day, Father, what is a pericope? A pericope is a little cutting out of. Yeah. So, a small section of the gospel is a pericope. Now, the first of these miracles, of these ten miracles, is the cleansing of the leper. Jesus has finished preaching the Sermon on the Mount, as I just said, and is followed, we know, by a large crowd. We see this in chapter 7, verse 28. Large crowds. They are astounded at his teaching. It is a leper who comes now to him, kneels before him, calls him Lord and asks to be made clean. In one swift move, Jesus does the unthinkable. He touches a leper. Now, even with the knowledge that modern science gives us, I think we would loathe touching a leper. And I use a strong word, we would loathe. For those living in the first century, this was one of the most dreaded diseases, enough for God to give Moses extensive instructions, and you can read them in Leviticus chapter 13 and chapter 14. Now, the biblical understanding of leprosy, uh, it's in Hebrew, it's saraat, that's the word for leprosy. This biblical understanding in, in the Old Testament included a variety of skin ailments. Leviticus chapter 13 and 14 list at least seven medical conditions as saraat, including scaly sin, skin uh, or blemishes on the skin. Now, at the time of Jesus, the lepers were despised from society. They were driven from their homes as outcasts. They had to wear torn clothes, let their hair hang loose. They had to uh, cover this way their upper lip. And they had to cry out, unclean, unclean. 
And to add to the distress of the person, the physical quarantine was twisted into a moral judgment because these people were now looked at as sinners. It is not really clear if the leper in the miracle had had what we would identify today as leprosy, namely Hansen's disease. Perhaps it could have even been psoriasis or any other skin ailment. For had it been a more distinct skin disease, he would have surely been driven out of this large crowd to say nothing of him being able to even get very close to Jesus. Now, all through the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks of fulfilling the law and in doing so, he now goes beyond what the law asks for. Remember, Jesus always says, Ye del mange mo. He himself practices what he preaches. He not only cleanses the man, but in, the in fulfillment of Jewish law, he sends the man off to the priests to be examined by the priests. So, what the Lord preached on the mountain, he now lives in the plains. The, um, the authentic living of Jesus is seen in this first miracle in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus did not have to touch the leper. There are many healings that we will see in the scriptures that he performed that did not involve touching. Besides, this act would have made him technically, as a Jew, made him unclean, both in the eyes of the law and the eyes of the people. Yet, he touches. And he does this to demonstrate the visible sign of God's love even to an outcast. And I see this so strongly in Pope Francis. In fact, I am influenced by this. Even in COVID times, people tell me, Father, you are touching everybody. I, I think human beings, from the moment we are born, are touched, we are held. That's why babies stop crying the minute you hold them. We need it. And I know that we have to be um, socially distanced, but for how long? I keep asking myself. I keep telling everybody now, look, if we have to die, let's die for the Lord rather than become uh, prisoners in these ivory palaces of ours. This is not where God wants us. And please, I know some of you love to pull my uh, lines out of context. I am not making a case for everybody to run out of their homes, especially those who are vulnerable and contract COVID. I am talking about us religious. I know the Cardinal keeps saying, Fathers, be safe, be safe, be safe. It's been more than a year now and I think those of us who have taken our shots have to be safe. And having said this, I can see that there were many wonderful priests who dared, dared to go out even in COVID times and be available, touching, maybe not physically touching people, but being physically present. And Jesus therefore goes out and touches this outcast, gives us an example and Pope Francis is filled with these examples. You see him hugging and kissing and touching, especially those who nobody wants to touch. Then there is also the question of the faith of the leper to be considered. Why? Because he, this leper, risks everything to make his way to Jesus, for if discovered he could have been even stoned. He sees in Jesus a man of authority and puts his faith in him. See how he says it. He says, if you wish, you can make me clean. There is no demand, Lord, you have to do this for me if you're a healer and a teacher of Israel. You have to do this. There's no demand. There's no insistence on healing. What does he do? Just a humble request. And in that moment, the leper, as I said in my introduction, the leper came face to faith. I want to thank once again all our donors to St. Stephen's Table. Thank those who are contributing to the Lovejoy Hope Foundation. We will put your name out in a slide at the end of this uh, recording. Now, I want to explain to you why I have stopped announcing, though many of you say, Father, don't announce my name. But those of you who do have, uh, would like that, th uh, you know, their contribution is acknowledged. And remember, it is not, people don't give their names so that they boast that they have, but it's an acknowledgement that we have received uh, your kindness and we've shared it. So I understand when names are read. But the reason why I have stopped reading the names is because last week uh, and the week before that, because of the transfers that we had, my transfer and the whole home that moved, there were several gaps and moments when we missed out reading or we inadvertently said there was no donation to the home. 
and while um, I know that nobody was uh, too upset about it, I did get messages saying, Father, uh, was there a problem, etc. So, what, uh, since I record in advance now, considering the amount of work that I now find myself having and I can't go live, uh, we will put these uh, donors' names, if you so desire, at the end of the uh, video recording as a slide. But we pray for you, we thank you, we understand your love. So thank you for your continuous support to the Love, Joy, Hope Foundation for Children, to St. Stephen's Table and to all the other activities that we have. I, I am grateful. I, I, um, I wish in some way I could uh, thank you and meet you and uh, really I am overwhelmed when I see the amount of love and the kindness that these charities receive because so many of you choose to give of your widow's might and I'm I'm grateful I'm grateful to you let us pray now the Father the Son the Holy Spirit Amen God our loving Father all of us are in need of cleansing some of us desperately need a physical healing many of us a spiritual cleansing and because of our shame because of our sin sometimes because of our physical state we stay away from you we consider ourselves unworthy to approach you or we are just physically not able to This unknown leper dared to come to you in faith. And that's what I need to do right now, Lord, whoever I am. I need to be audacious in my faith. To come into your presence and say, Lord, I need you. I'm not worthy of you, but I need you. I want you. If you will, Lord, only if you will take away my sin heal me from my infirmity I know Lord I have no right to ask I know how many times I've failed you I know that I've come to you only when I need you but your word today reminds me of audacious faith And this leper, defying every odd, the odds of society, the odds of perhaps his own sinfulness, the odds of his own sickness, the odds of even being healed by you, comes to you and humbly says, if you will, Lord, heal me. Lord, whoever I am, wherever I am right now, I repeat those words in your name, in faith. If you will, Lord, heal me. Heal me. Heal me, Lord. Just claim a healing for yourself right now. Healing over sin, healing over a physical ailment, healing over a deformity, healing over depression and mental issues. Heal me, Lord. Just claim a healing for yourself. Claim it in faith. And receive now the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to say this to you that many of you uh, write your comments, leave your comments. Whenever you experience a miracle in your life, testify to it. There are few Catholics who testify. We receive so much. Lord, I need something and it comes to me. 
and then I keep that miracle to myself. Remember that when you testify to what happens in your life, you encourage other Catholics and people of other faith to believe in our Lord Jesus. So I want to encourage you not just to like this video, not just to share, testify. And many of you leave your comments each day. I'm grateful. Uh, sometimes we get people who also try to leave um, some form of advertisement as a comment. Uh, we uh, then delete it. But share your testimony with, with us. And if you experience a healing, I would love to hear from, from you. Be blessed and have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless you.